It's another health issue that is unique to the desert because of our monsoon storms. That dust exposure can lead to valley fever. So we're diving deeper into that topic with our ABC 15 Health Insider, Dr. Shad Marvasti. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. So let's talk a little bit about what is valley fever and how do we get it? Yeah, so valley fever is caused by fungus, actually. It's a type of fungus spores that are there in the dust you know, in the desert. And then, you know, if the spores get kicked up, like at a construction site, or if you're out in the desert walking around and the dust kicks up, you basically inhale those fungal spores, they get into your lungs and they can infect you. Now, a lot of people who are otherwise healthy, don't have any kind of chronic health conditions or anything that makes them immune compromised, like weakens their immune system, you may not even get sick. Um, your immune system may just fight it right off. Others may have a mild illness, um, mostly respiratory type symptoms, and then still others, it can be protracted, not only not to just like a week, you know, a week or 10 days, but even to months, uh, in which case you're, you're going to have to have some treatment. It can be hard to diagnose sometimes because it's a respiratory illness, so that kind of mimics others. So how can we tell the difference? Yeah, all these respiratory illnesses, whether it's COVID, flu, a common cold, um, and, you know, um, valley fever or cocci, which uh, is the medical term, coccidiomycosis. In general, there's, there's, you know, most of them have fever and cough. The cough with valley fever tends to be a non-productive dry cough, but that's not an absolute rule, but that's what it tends to be. And then additionally, sometimes anywhere between 10 to 50% of people with valley fever may develop a rash. And that's something that you don't see with a cold or flu or with COVID. And it could be a rash where it's on your arms and your and your legs and, and your chest. And it's kind of like these uh, reddish splotches uh, that have a little bit of an opening area. Sometimes, um, where, you know, they're just basically spread out across your body. There could be also another type of rash, which is just really on your shin uh, on both sides of your leg and nothing else. Both of those two different types of rash uh, rashes are associated specifically with valley fever. Uh, there's a simple test that you can get at your doctor's office. Um, usually we don't do any treatments for it if you're otherwise healthy and the symptoms are mild, but if they're prolonged, right, more than just a few days and it starts becoming weeks or a month or more, then we will give you an antifungal uh, medication. So it's basically like an antibiotic, but it's antifungal. But since there's not kind of a specific valley fever you know, pill or cure-all, if you will. Uh, right. Are there any ways that we can avoid it? Yeah, the best is really to avoid those settings um, as much as possible. Maybe wearing a mask when you're around that setting and then making sure to close the you know doors and windows if like there's a house being built next door or something like that, because that can kick up, especially if there's wind uh, and dust and the big dust storms have boobs. That's also a source of spread. So being out in that setting without a nice high quality mask or, you know, breathing any of that stuff in that can expose you to it. And then making sure with any of these things to boost your immunity, right? And how do you boost your immunity as you get great sleep, you drink plenty of water, um, <clears throat> you eat more um, antioxidant rich foods, which are mostly whole plants and real food, you avoid processed foods, you avoid excess sugar, um, processed meats and things like that. And um, you know, if you need to take some immune boosting supplements, like if you have low vitamin D level, all of those things can help, you know, keeping yourself healthy obviously helps to prevent you from getting sick because your body will fight these things off. All part of living in the desert, knowing how to handle it. So more helpful advice as always, Dr. Shad, thank you.